Hi, I believe this is part seven of Oh That Mo. And if you want to see the original, better version of it, I'm providing the link in the description. If this is live link, it's up there. If it's YouTube, it's down there. And uh, you can see, when you go to it, you'll be able to check out the Islamic sources that are presented. Uh, the Quran, the Hadith. And uh, you can see whether or not uh, it's being taken out of context or uh, uh, twisted, as Muslims like to say. So anyway, I'll now continue this now with the... Uh, uh, here it goes. Literally gave birth to Mary, the mother of Jesus. In Quran 1886, which, as we noted, concerns Alexander the Great, we read, quote, Until when he reached the setting of the sun, he found it set in a spring of murky water. Near it he found a people." Unquote. This is clearly a scientific error since the sun does not and is not small enough to set in a spring of water. In response, Islamic commentator Malana Daryabadi argues the Arabic word for found here, wajada, should be taken in a subjective sense, meaning he perceived it setting in water. Even though Daryabadi admits the word can have an objective meaning corresponding to fact, i.e. he found it setting in water. However, Darya Bhatti is mistaken because right after this verse says Alexander found the sun setting in water, it then continues and says he also found a people, using the same Arabic word for found, wajada. Thus, according to the Quran, the same way Alexander literally found a people, he literally found the sun setting in water. And lastly, in a sound hadith in Sunan Abu Dawud, Muhammad said the sun literally sets in water, not that it's only perceived to do such. Quote, Narrated Abu Dar, I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah who was riding a donkey while the sun was setting. He asked, Do you know where the sun sets? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. He said, It sets in a spring of warm water. Unquote. The Quran is full of other logical errors or contradictions. For example, did creation take Allah eight days, as Quran 41, 9-12 clearly shows, or six days, as Quran 25, 59 clearly says? Is it possible for Muslims to treat their four wives justly, tadlu, as Quran 4, 3 indicates, or is it not possible to treat them justly, tadlu, as Quran 4, 129 indicates? It depends on what verse you read. Will the food for people in hell be from a tree with fruit stalks like the heads of devils as Quran 37, 62 to 66 says? Or will it only be foul pus as Quran 69, 36 says? Or will it only be bitter dari as Quran 88, 6 says? Will there be no questioning and inquiry of earthly acquaintances on that day, i.e. the day of judgment, as Quran 23, 99 to 101 clearly says? Or will such questioning and inquiry indeed take place on that day, as Quran 37, 26 to 28 clearly says? Did Allah create the earth first and then the heavens second, as Quran 2, 29 says? Or did he create the heavens first and then the earth second, as Quran 79, 27 to 32 says? Because Muhammad was a false prophet, he made many false prophecies. Deuteronomy 18, 22 says, When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the word does not come to pass, or come true, that is a word that the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You need not be afraid of him." Unquote. In Quran 32-4, Muhammad taught the Byzantines would defeat the Persians within three to nine years after the Persians first defeated them. It says, The Byzantines have been defeated in the nearest land, but they, after their defeat, will overcome within three to nine years. Unquote that the Arabic phrase fi bidi sina does indeed refer to three to nine years is evidenced by many sources. As quoted, the Sahih International translation of the Quran renders the phrase as three to nine years, as do the Mushan Khan and Pikthal translations. Moreover, Abdul Manan Omar's Dictionary of the Holy Quran affirms the word means, quote, few, range between three and nine. Also, the Islamic scholar Alama Usmani confirms, in lexicon and in the tradition, the word biddi is applied to a period ranging from three to nine years, unquote. Moreover, Yusuf Ali also confirms, quote, bid in the text means a short period, 
a period from three to nine years, unquote. So there's no question. However, the first battle Muhammad talked about was in AD 614, when the Persians shockingly conquered Jerusalem and defeated the Byzantines, who were led by Emperor Heraclius. Then the Byzantines did defeat the Persians afterwards, but it was 13 years later in AD 627 at Nineveh, not three to nine years later, as Muhammad falsely prophesied. This is a major false prophecy proving Muhammad was a false prophet. Next, in Quran 3, 150-151, Muhammad predicted the Muslims would be victorious in the Battle of Ahud with the Meccan pagans, quote, Nay, God is your protector, and he is the best of helpers. Soon shall we cast terror into the hearts of the unbelievers, for that they joined companions with God, for which he had sent no authority. Their abode will be the fire, and evil is the home of the wrongdoers, unquote. So according to Muhammad, God would protect the Muslims in this battle, terror would be cast into the hearts of the opposing army, and the abode of the opposing army would be hell. This indicates the Muslims would win the battle. Indeed, the commentator Ibn Abbas explained this was a prophecy of triumph regarding the Battle of Ahud. However, the Muslims went on to lose this battle in a devastating fashion. As Muslim scholar Ibn Kathir affirmed, quote, As Sudi said, when the disbelievers attacked Muslim lines during the Battle of Ahud and defeated them, some Muslims ran away to El Medina." Unquote. This is a major false prophecy. Now, in Sahih Muslim, Muhammad falsely predicted the last hour would happen during the lifetime of a young boy who was present with him. Quote, Anas reported a person asked Allah's Messenger as to when the last hour would come. He had in his presence a young boy of the Ansar who was called Muhammad. Allah's Messenger said, if this young boy lives, he may not grow very old till he would see the last hour coming to you." Unquote. Moreover, Muhammad predicted the end of the world would happen very shortly after his life. Quote, Anas reported Allah's Messenger as saying, I and the last hour have been sent like this, and while doing it, joined the forefinger and the middle finger. Muhammad said this about 1400 years ago, which is clearly incorrect. Also, Muhammad predicted, quote, the last hour would come when the Romans would form a majority amongst people." Unquote. However, the largest people group in the world is by far the Han Chinese, who have over a 1.2 billion person population. Thus, Muhammad was wrong since the Han Chinese far supersede any ethnic group, including Romans, in terms of population number and growth. Because Muhammad was demon-possessed and also under the control of black magic, he went mad and produced some of the most crazy and irrational teachings ever known. Muhammad taught spitting to the left stops bad dreams. In Sahih Bukhari we read, Narrated Abu Karta, the Prophet said, A good dream that comes true is from Allah, and a bad dream is from Satan. So if any one of you sees a bad dream, he should seek refuge with Allah from Satan, and should spit on the left, for the bad dream will not harm him." Unquote. This is strange and superstitious. Muhammad taught quite a number of absurd things that no uh, modern person could possibly hold to. For example, he taught that Adam was created 90 feet tall. We have no evidence for that. And Although Muhammad doesn't say, I suppose it follows that Eve was also created 90 feet tall. Otherwise, that would have made for a very awkward relationship, to say the least. But so apparently, according to Muhammad, since the time of Adam and Eve, people have been decreasing in stature so that we've been getting shorter and shorter. Um, even if it were the case that people have been getting shorter, it hasn't been from an original starting point of 90 feet. Uh, but something substantially lower than that. Muhammad commanded a grown woman to breastfeed a younger man she was not married to. In Sahih Muslim we read, Salha, daughter of Suhail, came to Allah's Messenger and said, Allah's Messenger, I swear by Allah that I see in the face of Abu Hudayfa the signs of disgust on account of entering of Salim in the house. Whereupon Allah's Messenger said, Suckle him. She said, He has a beard. But he again said, Suckle him, and it would remove what is there, expression of disgust, on the face of Abu Hadefa. 
This is twisted. Moreover, Muhammad taught some adult breastfeeding is okay. In fact, Muhammad's wife Aisha claimed verses discussing this in the Quran got lost, thereby corrupting the Quran. Quote, Aisha reported that it had been revealed in the Holy Quran that ten clear sucklings make the marriage unlawful, then it was abrogated and substituted by five sucklings, and Allah's apostle died, and it was before that time found in the Holy Quran and recited by the Muslims." Unquote. Supposedly they were eaten by a goat. Well, it says domestic animal, which could be a goat, it can be a chicken or whatever. But I bet it was a goat because goats like to eat things that aren't, you know, considered edible. Uh, not picky when it comes to food. Anyway, if you're Muslim uh, and you think, oh, this is a bunch of crap, put it in comment form. Or if this is live leak, uh, yeah. Well, put in comment form, and we'll uh, see if uh, you disagree with the Islamic sources that are being presented. Bye.